today we're having a seminar down at AMA Fight Club in Whippany, New Jersey for Dan Miller and his son. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, Dan's son has a PKD and he has ongoing medical costs. So Mike Constantino, the owner at AMA Fight Club and the family at AMA Fight Club came together and uh, Jim Miller and Mike asked me to kind of take the ball and, and raise money for Dan's son and his treatments. Uh, he has a donor and they just need the money to keep that going. And everyone's come together in, in drones to help us. It's really wonderful. So PKD is um, polycystic kidney disease. He has the autosomal form? Yes, exactly. Okay, which is a little bit rarer than the, the dominant form. One in 20,000 kids uh, right. have it. Well, we want to just raise money, also in a way, raise awareness for PKD. Yes. And, and try to get the information out there, try to get people to um, support the cause. Is there a website that people can, can uh, go to? Um, yes, the, uh, if you, you go on our Facebook page, the Daniel James Miller Foundation, or on Twitter at Daniel James Miller Foundation, and then we have a WordPress page. If you do a Google, it's uh, Daniel James Miller, and uh, you can go right to the amafightclub.com is the best way, and all the links are up there. Okay. And then we're having an eBay auction at the end of the month. Okay. Everyone's come together and sending us all this wonderful stuff from signed prints from the Randy Couture book and all, all this great stuff. Okay. So we're going to put it all together and do an auction at the end of the month as well. So the fundraiser today is for your nephew who has PKD. And can you tell me a little bit about what's going on today? Um, today we're just uh, you know running a fundraiser. Um, uh, like we said, for for Danny, um, he's uh, having a, a kidney transplant mm -hmm. in in January. Um, and the way insurance and Medicaid and all that stuff works. Um, my, my brother and, and his wife are going to have to pay out of pocket uh, to, to cover his anti-rejection drugs and right. blood tests and stuff like that. Um, so we're just trying to raise a little bit of money um, to, to help out, you know, and, and, and try to, you know, relieve a little bit of that burden for them. Um, but the way the MMA community has come out and supported, uh, you know, my brother and my nephew is, is just amazing. Um, you know, we're expecting a great turnout today, and, and, and even before today, we just had, had so much so many donations and, and uh, people offer to, to add things to, to the raffle and stuff like that to, to, to make even more money. So it's just been, I'm getting chills just thinking about the generosity. Right? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. So today at AMA, we're doing the fundraiser for, um, for little Danny. And so why did you want to be a part of it? Uh, the Miller family, great guys. Um, been working with them for a couple of years now. Uh, Top-notch guys, just, uh, good family guys. Uh, anything I could do for them, you know, I would do in, a, in an instant. This is your first time here at AMA. First time here. Okay. I was supposed to come a bunch of times to train, and it didn't happen. But uh, this got me out here. Yeah. So yeah, why are you? Do you know Dan? Do you know Jim? I never met Dan, but uh, I was at a signing in Virginia um, for Wounded Warriors, and I met Jim Miller there for the first time, and. I was talking to him a little bit about his uh, brother and what he went through, this and that, and he, he just gave me like the lowdown on it. I just felt so bad. I, you know, my heart went out to him. Not only am I a wrestling coach, but I'm the training partner of these guys. You know, I'll train with them MMA. I do pretty much every, everything with them. You know, Dan's, I mean, you know, he, he's got a tough road. I mean, he, most guys are, are obviously younger. Some guys are younger and don't have the family, and it's easier for them. And then Dan, on top of that, has the issues, and um, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Sometimes he can't get in here because he has to do something right. with his family. So, you know, and, and and the fact that he's even competed over the last two years, like he has, is right. phenomenal. You know, he's extremely talented, and um, you know, hopefully in the future we'll see uh, a lot more. Uh, I have a I have a one and a half year old uh, daughter, so it's like you know I can kind of relate a little bit, and uh, it's. Crazy to think that this guy was actually training and fighting top guys in the in the world, you know, going through this type of you know personal mm -hmm. issue. So, you know, do anything that could help. Um, so, I figured it'd come down. Danny has a PKD, which is polycystic kidney disease. Um, he was born with it. Um, initially, when he was born, he did have some kidney function. But when he was um, about hmm, eight weeks old, yeah. um, he became really sick and his kidneys shut down. Um, so he's been on dialysis since he was about four months old. Um, they do dialysis every night. Um, Dan and Kristen have done an incredible job of managing, you know, his his um, 
condition. They learned not only how to, you know, actually do the dialysis, but they learned the workings of the, you know, managing it. They know when he has a little too much fluid on him, so they know what to do. They are so in tune with what's going on with him. I, I am amazed at how much they've learned and how well they've managed his, his condition. Um, fortunately, we are looking at transplant end of January it's scheduled and you know that's really what uh, we're looking for. You know, it's weird because you you expect okay, you know like the MMA community, they're, they're, they're great people, stuff like that. And you expect that you're going to have, uh, you know, some, some generosity. But uh, when, it, when it really starts to come in and, and, uh, and you really start to, see, start to see, you know, everybody from, from you know, Dana White and the guys of the and UFC and just fans, fans in general and, and other fighters, guys that, guys that, you know, Dan has fought, guys that I have fought, just coming out and, and right. uh, you know supporting basically one of their own. It's just amazing. Right. What do you think about that? The way people have been coming together to support you in this. Uh, it's been overwhelming, really. Um, you know, I can't really words. You know, I, there's nothing really to describe. You know, just, you know there really isn't much. Uh, it's just my wife and I are overwhelmed with the support and. Uh, ecstatic and uh, you know I think it's really gonna help Danny out. It just shows, you know, how you know what the MMA community can, you know, can really do when they pull together. Yeah. It's an emotional thing. Yeah. You know. Um are you you're donating things um Yeah, I'm giving uh, my walkout my walkout shirt from UFC one thirty nine, my hat, my gloves, um, shorts. So I'm you know giving some subway signing them, you know. Just trying to attract more people to come here and to donate. And the underground, that you guys, you saw that whole chocolate owl T-shirt thing. How amazing is that? No, you, you can't can't describe the the the, the generosity that, mm -hmm. that, that we've seen. You know, there's just no way to to repay all these people for for their time and their effort mm -hmm. and, and you know monetary donations. Right. That's, you know, we'll just continue to fight our asses off and hopefully put on good shows. What was it like having two fighters? What is it like having two <laughs> fighters? <laughs> well, it, it's, it's, it's fun. people ask, the, yeah, the biggest question you get is people will say, I mean, being a fighter, oh, are they mean, are they nasty? <laughs> oh, you guys are wearing the same shorts. Do you really? Was it yeah. planned? <laughs> no. no. It's never planned. Never. It's a little ESP thing we got going. Really? <laughs> I had my red gentleman's in and I'm like, uh, I'm just going to switch to blue. All the time. Too. And I don't know. It I, happens a lot. Yeah. We used to wear the same like, shirt. Seriously, what was it like growing up with each other? I mean, I know you had to ask that question a million times, but like, did you kick the crap out of each other? It really never. <laughs> <laughs> no. And there would be no kicking the crap out of each other when we were little, because he was always a lot bigger than me. Yeah. <laughs> so it always would have been one-sided. So he uh, he spared me. They're, it's a profession. I mean, and you know, people don't understand. A lot of people don't understand that because it's just like, well, it, it's a brutal profession. It's, but I mean, if they train what they're doing, they know what they're doing. Yeah, you know, I mean, that helps. I mean, because none of them ever got in trouble when they were, you know. You know, teenagers. I think none of them were in fights or you know anything. I mean, it's they rolled. They did a lot of rolling around right. when they were kids. Yeah, you know, so it was just a natural progression. I mean, they loved the competition. That's what got them into it. Right. Is they, they they missed the competition. Yeah. You know, so I mean, that's how they got started in it. Did you fight? No, no, not me. I wrestled a little bit in, in uh, high school, but you know, uh, I didn't fight. Yeah, you know, they tell me I should have because that's they get their hard head from me. <laughs> they get their tenacity from their mother. I mean, and their strength from their mother, but their hard head and their, their rock chins they get from me. <laughs> and for you, seeing them in the cage, does it? What is it oh like for God. you? Is it heart wrenching? It's. I get really, really nervous, but it's also really exciting. I mean, there's nothing like the adrenaline rush really? that you get. You know, when you know Jim or Dan, they you know, like. It's, it's like addictive, right. but I, I am a nervous wreck. 
as time goes on, uh, again, I don't think I get as nervous because I do put things into perspective. And you know, if they lose, oh well, they'll get up and they'll, you know, go back to training. And you know, so it's not such. I don't feel it's as big a deal as maybe a couple of years ago. Right. No. If you look back in the past couple of years, do you have like good memories of fighting, or you just think of? Do you have memories of? Can you separate the two? Uh, definitely. Uh, I remember all my fights, and they were all, I have fun in every fight. You know? I mean, win or lose, man. I uh, am I probably my you know the most fun I've had in any fight was the Bisping fight. And I just had fun. I don't know what it was. And, uh, you know, punched my face in, but uh, I had a lot of fun. But, you know, again, it's you know. And, you know when I go home, it's all about, you know, my kids. But, you know, you know I, I made a decision that, you know, this was my job and, you know, it's just like anyone else's job. You know, I need to, I need to, to uh, go work and make money to support my family. So uh, what I need to do, you know, I need to work, you know, work. So I came to practice and did the best I could on, uh, you know, trying to put out the best effort I could. And do you think that the, your situation with your son and not being able to train as much, you know, will attribute it to some of your losses? Um, I wouldn't say that. Uh, you know, I fought some extremely tough competition. The guys that I fought were, you know, some of the best tough in the world. Power. And, uh, I, you know, I can't tell you whether if I had, you know, 100%, you never know if you're going to be 100%. So, I mean, if it didn't happen and, you know, I might have been got hurt if I was training harder, I, I can't tell you how it would have ended up. Um, you know, people go through stuff all the time. You know, people fight with injuries, people fight with, uh, you know, jail fought with, you know, after the death of his father. Uh, it was just, st stuff happens, life happens. Uh, you know, and I just try to... Yeah, but not... The stuff that you're going through is um, is pretty intense, and I think that you're handling it so amazing. And I think that so many people wouldn't handle it the way that you do. You're such a strong person. Um, I just spoke to Chris Weidman. He said he would be in bed crying all day. Do you think that you would be able to go through the the stress that Dan was going through and train, n knowing like what you go through for training? Nah, I'd be in bed all day crying. Oh.